Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. Uh, this video I'm going to talk about SARMs and post-cycle therapy. But before I get into the video, I need to say, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't condone the use of anything that's not approved by the FDA. Um, SARMs aren't meant for human consumption. Um, I'm simply relaying my experiences and information that I've obtained to you guys for informational purposes or entertainment purposes only and so make sure you're doing your own research and don't take my word for anything so um <clears throat> post psychotherapy on SARMs so to kind of relate it to something um when you take steroids people understand that you have to do a post psychotherapy right it's pretty obvious you know you take injections of testosterone or decadurabolin or whatever else and it's going to shut down your natural testosterone production along with that you're going to have a massive influx of estrogen. Your estrogen levels are going to spike unless you do something to control it because the hormones in your body are being converted from testosterone to estrogen because your body's trying to find a balance, right? So when you go off of synthetic testosterone, especially, your body's got this massive amount of estrogen that is producing and then you take away the testosterone and now there's nothing to balance it. So then you get the side effects like gynecomastia right and I've had to deal with that because I didn't do a long enough post cycle therapy so um, I was asked to do a video on SARMs and PCT and so I kind of wanted to mention the steroid PCT um, to give it a kind of a comparison so when you're taking SARMs you know obviously it's going to be dose dependent on how much your testosterone production gets shut down but that being said some SARMs like RAD 140 actually suppress estrogen also so in the past, when I've done a SARM cycle, I treated it like a steroid cycle. I would take, you know, tamoxifen at 20 milligrams a day or 40 milligrams a day, whatever else, and then phase it out over a period of six weeks or whatever else, you know, mimicking the PCT I did for steroids. But I found that that doesn't really seem to work for my body for SARMs. And I got to say, you know, everybody's body is different. I've got friends that do cycles of injectable steroids, you know, for three months at a time, you know, 12 week cycles, and they don't do any PCT when they go off, and they don't have any side effects that are, you know, no gynecomastia or hair loss or anything like that. Like, everybody's body reacts differently, right? I know for me, when I take steroids, I have to do a very good PCT that's usually at least 12 weeks long, along with, like, you know, liver cleanse or whatever else, depending on if I'm taking orals or whatever. So, from my experience with the SARMs, though, if I take, like, an estrogen blocker it almost seems to counterbalance the recovery and make the recovery take longer and my theory on that is that when you're taking something like the rad 140 and your estrogen is also being suppressed if you introduce something that is suppressing your estrogen even more your body's not going to have a proper balance right so if you're taking like rad 140 your estrogen is being suppressed your testosterone is also being suppressed to me it makes more sense for my body not to take a traditional PCT. And what I've done in the past is just taken DHEA and I have, you know, like tamoxifen or a clomid on hand, whatever else, to counterbalance if I start feeling any tingling in my nipples or anything like that, right? And I kind of know how my body feels when I'm going through a post cycle um, if I need to increase the dose or whatever else. And I do do blood work occasionally. I should do it more consistently um, throughout you know cycling stuff but usually I do before and after labs and um, so I kind of know where my hormone balance is before during and after a cycle right and in my experience taking something like the DHEA is going to stimulate your body to produce more testosterone and estrogen and it's going to ramp up the production of all your hormones basically especially your, your sex hormones um, kind of at a more even pace um, I don't know if that really makes sense to you guys. Hopefully I kind of explained that correctly. Um, I'm not saying don't do a PCT with SARMs. Like I said, you got to experiment and figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Um, but it also depends on what kind of SARM you're taking, um, the cycle duration, um, your body, you know, the diet. I think your post-cycle therapy diet, or post-cycle diet rather, has just as much to do with maintaining your gains and maintaining a level of health once you go off cycle it's very hard to stay motivated to go into the gym right you don't you, you don't have that 
you know, drive, that aggression to go work out, you're not getting the intense pumps that you were getting. You're, you lose a lot of strength within, you know, days or a week of going off cycle. And it gets rather boring or depressing to go into the gym. And along with that, people start eating junk food, you know. And I know I'm guilty of doing that too. You know, go off cycle, start feeling like shit, don't want to work out, start eating carbs and you know, next thing you know, I'm eating freaking lasagna at Olive Garden or something stupid, you know? And then I wonder why I got fat all of a sudden. Well, it's because I'm not eating healthy. You got to keep your protein levels up both during cycle and after cycle because your body needs the proper balance of nutrients to maintain itself, right? And so I think that has a lot to do with people losing muscle after they go off of cycle. is because their body's not getting the correct nutrients anymore. You know, people are really generally speaking careful on what they eat while they're on a cycle because they want to get the most out of it right and since you're taking a cycle you think more about your diet because you see the improvements in the mirror and in the gym you know everything else and it's just it's a, a very um confidence building experience for most people right so when it comes to pct and sarms my recommendation is if you decide to do sarms figure out which one or which ones you're going to be taking and then look to see if that one suppresses testosterone or estrogen or both and then have an estrogen blocker on hand in case you start getting some side effects right um, maybe something like you know like I said in the past I've done 40 milligrams a day of Clomid for two weeks and drop it to 30 then 20 then 10 over the course of a couple of weeks each and you could do something like that if you really need to but for my body I haven't had to do that um, and like I said that one time I did do it and and took the PCT like that it didn't actually help and I think it actually um, and it, it kind of seemed to um, deplete some of the progress I made if that makes any sense it also seems like it took longer for my body to balance back out as opposed to times when I've taken the SARMs and then just gone off them cold turkey so think about that like I said research the SARMs figure out what works for your body everybody's different like I said several times in this video and I think it has more to do with your body type and your um, hormonal your you know the, the way your body produces hormones and everything else um, than actually taking a PCT so I hope this video is helpful for you guys um, if you want to use any of the supplements or SARMs. Their SARMs are for research purposes only. But if you want any of that stuff, I have links below in the in the description. Or rather, I have one link and that takes you to a list of links where all of my affiliate um, portals are. So there's Proven Peptides on there and Soul AF Labs and then all the supplements I take off of Amazon, etc. So I appreciate you guys watching this um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.